We just learned about finding definite integrals by using the fundamental theorem of calculus and if we can find one antiderivative of the function then we can find the answer to the area under the curve or the definite integral. The problem is that unless you're given a really simple function to integrate it's sometimes really difficult to find the antiderivative. In fact sometimes it's impossible. But today we're going to talk about antiderivatives of functions that are the result of the chain rule. So to remember what we're talking about, the chain rule is when you're taking the derivative of one function plugged inside of another function. So here we have an inside function of u equals sine of x and an outside function of u squared. So to take the derivative of it we get the derivative of the outside function, so the derivative of u squared is 2u, so 2 something plug in the u, so we plug in sine of x, times the derivative of u, the derivative of the inside function, which is cosine of x. So the derivative of sine of x squared is 2 sine of x cosine of x. And we can write this kind of in shorthand to help us remember. If we're calling our inside function u, we can call this derivative 2u times the derivative of u. Okay, so what does that mean for us? trying to find integrals. Well that means now we can find the integral, the antiderivative of 2 sine of x cosine of x. We just said, well we got that when we took the derivative of sine of x squared. So this must be the antiderivative of 2 sine of x cosine of x must be sine of x squared plus c, some constant. So what we're saying here is if we have the chain rule, we have one function plugged inside of another, we know we get the derivative of the outside function with the inside function plugged in times the derivative of the inside function. So therefore if we're trying to take an integral and we look at this thing we're trying to integrate and we notice this pattern, we notice that it's the derivative of some function with some other function plugged in multiplied by on the outside the derivative of that function that was plugged in, then we know that that was a chain rule and we can undo it by getting back the original function with the inside function plugged in. Now this is kind of hard to see. You might be like, how am I supposed to know if I have one of these? So this is why we develop a technique for when we're integrating to determine whether the function actually was the result of a chain rule. So what we're going to do, remember how back here when we talked about the chain rule we called that inside function u? We're going to see if we can actually rewrite our antiderivative in terms of this u. So according to what we did before, our inside function should be u equals sine of x. So if I try to make a substitution, a change of variables, where I want to rewrite my integral in the new variable u, where u is equal to sine of x, then what would I do? If I take the derivative of this equation, I can take the derivative of u in terms of x, du dx, is equal to cosine of x, right? And now I want to actually t treat the du and dx as differentials. I'm going to separate them. So I'm going to say du is equal to cosine of x dx. So notice this equation came directly from my u equals sine of x equation. So I've picked the u equals sine of x and from that I'm able to determine that du would equal cosine of x dx. And now I can come over here to my problem and I can say, well here, cosine of x dx, I said that that can be renamed du. And here sine of x, I said that that can be renamed u. So if I change variables, my new integral is 2u du. But hey, that is a lot easier to integrate. I know the antiderivative of 2u, it's just u squared. So I get u squared plus c. But now the problem is even though I was able to find the antiderivative, now I found my answer in terms of this variable u. My original problem was in terms of this variable x. So before I'm done with the problem, I want to go back to x's. So I use again this exact same equation, this one master equation that tells me what my substitution is going to be. I use u equals sine of x and I plug it in to get sine of x squared plus c as my final answer. 
which is the same thing we got before when we just knew the 2 sine of x cosine of x was the derivative of sine squared. But now we have a method that helps us figure it out. So note what we've done here. We've said that if we have some function f prime of g of x times g prime of x that we're trying to integrate, usually we actually write this as f of g of x times g prime of x because when we're looking at the integral, like we were looking at 2 sine of x cosine of x, we're not really thinking about these as derivatives so much. We're thinking about them as their own function. So this would mean if you can find the antiderivative of f, then you get the antiderivative of f with this function g plugged in. But again, this still looks really ugly. This is why we like the u notation, because look what happens if we try to do this in u notation. If we have a function of u times du, which means the derivative of u, then we get the antiderivative of our function with u plugged in. That's really simple. 